Hello everyone, Yana is here and welcome to my channel. There are four assumptions generally relied upon in accounting. Economic entity, going concern, monetary unit, and periodicity. The assumptions help to explain how companies should recognize, measure, and report financial elements and events. Today, we will go through the going concern assumption. Most accounting methods rely on the going concern assumption. But what does it mean? No, it is not that you are concerned about the company's business operations. The going concern assumption refers to the expectation that the company will continue to operate for the foreseeable future. This means that for accounting purposes, we assume that the company will continue operating as normal and we follow normal, generally accepted accounting principles procedures. The going concern assumption has three significant implications. Let's look at the implications first, and then we will look at an example of how the going concern assumption applies to different items on financial statements. The first implication is that the historical cost principle loses its usefulness if we assume that a company is eventually going to be liquidated. Under a liquidation approach, a company would better state assets at net realizable value, which is sales price less costs of disposal. The second implication is that depreciation and amortization approaches will need to be adjusted. Depreciation and amortization approaches for the company would not be needed given a liquidation approach. And finally, the third implication is that current and non-current classification of assets and liabilities may lose their significance. Current and non-current classification of assets and liabilities for the company would be difficult to justify if the company will not continue to operate in the near future. Also, reporting liabilities based on priority in liquidation instead of current and non-current classification would be more reasonable. Most companies have a high continuance rate and fulfill their objectives and commitments. When it is known that a company is going out of business, we should apply a different type of accounting method called liquidation accounting. The Financial Accounting Standards Board, or FASB, has issued two accounting standards in response to the minimal guidance addressing the going concern assumption, including when it is appropriate to apply or not to apply the liquidation basis of accounting. If you are not familiar with FASB codification, watch my video about it. I am posting the link here and in the description below. The first is FASB ASC 205-40, Presentation of Financial Statements, Going Concern, Disclosure of Uncertainties about an entity's ability to continue as a going concern. It requires additional disclosure when substantial doubt about the company's ability to continue as a going concern occurs. The second standard is FASB ASC 205-30, Presentation of Financial Statements, the Liquidation Basis of Accounting. It requires that companies use the liquidation basis of accounting when liquidation is imminent. That happens when either a plan for liquidation has been approved or a plan for liquidation is being imposed by other forces, such as involuntary bankruptcy. If liquidation accounting is used, financial statements should reflect relevant information about the company's resources and obligations in liquidation by measuring and presenting assets and liabilities at the amount of cash or other consideration that the company expects to collect or pay in liquidation. Additional disclosures about the plan for liquidation, the methods and significant assumptions used to measure assets and liabilities, the type and amount of costs and income occurred, and the expected duration of liquidation should also be presented. Now, let's look at an example. 
If the going concern assumption is not made in accounting, what would be the differences in the amounts shown in the financial statements for the following items? A, land, B, depreciation expense on equipment, C, inventory, and D, prepaid insurance. A, land will be reported at net realizable value instead of its historical cost. B, depreciation expense on equipment would not be disclosed. Depreciation would be inappropriate if the going concern assumption no longer applies. C. Inventory would be reported at net realizable value. And D. Prepaid insurance would also be reported at net realizable or redeemable value. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and ring the notification bell so you are notified when we release more videos like this. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you all again in the next video.